But let me tell you, a man of God said that there are three stages of marriage. Yes. But I added the fourth one. First is lust. Number two is uh, dust. Number three is rust. And number four is trust. Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we are taking notes. <laughs> Every marriage yes. must go through those four stages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lust, dust, rust, and trust. Pearl Radio, the home of fresh and classic hits. Uh, my name's uh, Reverend Alan Rono. Mm -hmm. I'm born again. I love the Lord as my personal savior. I'm a father. I'm a husband of one wife. <laughs> and I have to specify that she's a woman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nowadays you have to. Yeah. Uh, because of uh, where? Because Palituko. Of many other things. <laughs> but they were too specific. Yes. Uh, I'm a father of five. Mm. In church, they call me Baba the Fifth. Mm. So I'm happy to be here. Uh, I serve with a ministry called Gospel Tabernacle Worship Center in South B. And uh, I senior pastor uh, Bishop John Charles Muyu, and our presiding bishop Bishop Akiki Muyu. Mm. Yes, amazing, amazing, amazing. Yes. And uh, Reverend Allen, even as we get to know, you want to know uh, where were you, uh, where were you born, where were you raised? Are you raised in Nairobi, Emma? <laughs> uh, let me say that uh, I'm, I'm I'm a city boy. <laughs> and, uh, as they say, Jogo Amjini Hawiki Shambani. I've been born and bred here. Yeah. Uh, there in South Sea. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, over uh, uh, in a few years, I'll be hitting uh, half a century. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've been in Nairobi all that while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many are you in your family? Uh, we, are, we are a big family. We are, we are 12. 12. 12. Like the 12 tribes of Israel. 12 tribes of, of Israel. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, you must be the firstborn. Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just there. But you can imagine with, with uh, those number uh, of children, mm -hmm. the house was uh, joyous. It was full of life. Mm -hmm. uh, there were no phones or any technology those days. So it was... Uh, it was real yeah yes and, and which year was this because uh, in nairobi raising 12 children in nairobi with this economy right now it's kind of tricky which year was this hats off to my parents <laughs> from the from the 80s from the 80s yes mm -hmm. from the 80s mm. all the way to when we finished school i finished uh, in uh, 1999 mm. yeah wow so how was school life how was life also in south sea uh being raised in as much as saying it was lively yeah but i know it was it was kind of challenging even for all of you uh, yeah but uh, the, the good thing mm -hmm. you know if you look compare the family unit those years mm -hmm. and today there's a change uh, those, those years uh the family values were really being held at heart you had a you had a no-nonsense dad who just by his looks would make you stop your nonsense mm -hmm. yeah and you just align yeah so we have been brought up by parents who instilled uh, moral values in us that we have carried all the way through mm -hmm. i'll tell you that uh, 12 kids being raised in nairobi no one ever drank none has ever smoked wow that tells you the the caliber of the parents that brought us up you might have come from a christian background yes it was a christian background although uh, my parents were not very frequent in church mm -hmm. but the values that they instilled mm -hmm. have carried us through mm -hmm. yeah amazing hey that is that is uh so that is possible it is possible it is possible it is possible because uh there's a preacher who said one time he does not understand how like like us now Two parents can raise 12 children mm -hmm. and when these two parents get old mm -hmm. 12 kids cannot take care of two parents that is still a mystery yeah wow. that is that itself is a testimony yes <laughs> it is a testimony <laughs> yeah but let's talk about you uh Reverend Lauren, Rono. Yes. you know about now you are um, your life you know how, how was school life for you and also you personally were you a good boy or were these a uh, carood boy back in school <laughs> uh yeah it's a good place to begin yeah uh, let me say that god has been faithful 
because you, you know usually when people give testimonies they give testimonies of the the, the bad that they underwent mm -hmm. the wrongs that they did mm -hmm. but very few people give testimony of how god kept them yes from the wrong and from the evil in society so for me i've been a good boy mm. wherever my mom is she and my parents they can testify that uh i got born again when i was uh when i was uh, 16 years old so that by itself kept me from sin and uh, in, indul indulging myself in the things that uh, young people of that age do mm -hmm. yeah I've, I've i've been a church boy basically from my teenage mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and how about your schooling uh, schooling uh, I, I went uh, to jamhuri high school and there uh, it, it it wasn't very easy because those were the days again uh, let me say that you know the caliber of of people uh, students that we had in those years they were big boys uh, it's not like today you have somebody who's in form two is still short it just looks like a boy who who is uh, in class seven yeah mm -hmm. but uh, so we we had boys there sometimes who, who are rough but uh I started uh, serving in the CU for, for for many years and I rose through the ranks until by the time I was in form four I was the CU chairman yeah so mm -hmm. we were just doing the work of the lord mm -hmm. from that time wow yeah that is amazing and also what are some of those challenges that you 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 are going through uh while growing up personally uh, uh, uh some of the challenges include uh peer pressure mm -hmm. peer pressure where uh you find people in society who who seek to conform you to their ways of life or even uh, just the temptations of young people but uh as i said god has been faithful mm -hmm. that uh he kept me from all that mm -hmm. yeah and so what did you decide to pursue after completing school uh, after completing school uh, basically i've just been serving the lord mm -hmm. yeah so you've been serving in church all i've been serving in church from 1996 uh yeah. you know sir <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> when well, you I, mentioned I, 1996 I, i'll tell you this <laughs> the church that i serve yes i have been there for 26 years now yes yeah 26 years 26 years wow that is so amazing the lord has kept you all he, these the while. lord has kept me mm -hmm. and uh he has been faithful mm. i just said he has been faithful amazing yeah and now when you uh, you, you mentioned that you served in church mm. you exactly knew that god has called you to ministry or how did you know that god has called you to be a man of god to be a pastor you know way before i became a pastor because this is my 14th year mm -hmm. as a pastor yeah but way before that mm -hmm. you, you know when you read first samuel the story of samuel when he was sleeping yeah he had a voice three times he thought it was eli the priest mm -hmm. not knowing that it was the lord who was calling him yeah so deep within from the inner man you can just tell that this is the direction actually the bible says you shall hear a voice behind you saying this is the way walk in it yeah so that is what happened to me mm -hmm. just just by my daily living and the decisions i made were all heading to one direction yeah yeah and i just followed without uh, restraint or even arguing yes and uh, people think that the life of a pastor is uh, quite easy you just chase away demons and you just preach the gospel but uh, exactly what are the challenges that you went through even as you hit to the call of god uh one of the main challenges that pastors go through is that uh misunderstanding mm -hmm. yeah Pe many people outside there number one do not even value the office of a pastor they f they feel that it's a waste of time some of them uh, look at pastors as if they are people who have failed in life and now uh, the only thing they can do is uh, get in church and do what they are doing mm -hmm. some feel that pastors are there because of the money because of uh, offerings and everything it's just because of a few rotten tomatoes in society yeah who have m who have made the others who, who are serving god out of a pure conscience as paul says 
they are the ones now who are calling the shots outside there and basically the greater majority who are serving god truly mm -hmm. are being judged based on the actions of these few people yeah yeah and it's very sad because uh, we think that uh, you know uh, pastors are like this but actually it's because of those bad people who are portraying the bad picture about the men of god yep yeah but, but uh the, paul says that let your make your calling and your election sure mm -hmm. yeah so and uh, as you serve god you just serve him when you're focused yeah you just have it when you're focused because if you listen to the side shows and the noises you'll be distracted it's just like a a driver who is driving yeah you, you have to focus if you just stay here to the people on the road can cause an accident how did you meet uh <laughs> this wonderful woman uh <laughs> that is another story by itself yeah. but let me say mm -hmm. we have grown together in the church because my wife has been in that church from the time she was in sunday school mm. yeah so that was around 1996 mm -hmm. as i've said mm -hmm. so we have just grown there as young people then we joined uh, the praise and worship department where we uh, we sang together so we have been singing for all these years together now by the time it was getting to 2008 uh first my dad was on my case mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because uh he was always asking me now what what next yeah what are we saying you should love asking us what are we saying <laughs> yeah so now <laughs> in nine in 2008 now i decided uh, to make a move i saw that uh time is ripe for me to, uh, to to get married so i approached her and told her about my intentions mm. yeah so, uh, you you know people in church usually especially ladies when you when you 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 cut hear them now they tell you give me some time to pray <laughs> <laughs> so my, at that time she told me to give her time to pray yeah. i thought she'll, she'll come back after three months mm -hmm. with either yes or no or wait mm -hmm. it was on a friday but by monday just three days she came and told me there is no point of her lying to herself she had been praying that i would open my mouth and tell her <laughs> what she wants to hear <laughs> so all this time you have been uh... I, I i was very shy because uh. you know i was somebody who is on the forefront yes in front of people so i was always very fearful that uh, she would say kumbe i had my intentions and I was pretending that here because I play keyboard in the church. Mm -hmm. I'm here playing keyboard kumbe. I had other other intentions, so I was always afraid. I was very shy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not knowing my speaking was an answer to her prayer. Wow. Yeah. So in three days she said she has accepted. Just like that. Uh, so in uh, after that in four months we got married, and today it is uh, 15 years. 15 years 15 years what has kept you all this long uh friendship first friendship because uh people get married without being friends marriage must be built on the foundation of friendship yeah without friendship you can be in the same ship but as strangers mm. yeah so I'll say first it's friendship. Secondly, trust. Yeah. Then love comes. Oh, love comes. But but let me tell you, yeah. a man of God said that there are three stages of marriage. Yes. But I added the fourth one. First is lust. Number two is uh, dust. Number three is rust. And number four is trust. Hey, hey. <laughs> I think I think we are taking notes. <laughs> Every marriage yes. must go through those four stages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lust, dust, rust, and trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you choose your poison. Wow! And because I've mentioned those stages, yeah. you've talked about lust. Yeah. Now let's get to the dust now. <laughs> <laughs> what is this dust that you have experienced in in marriage? Uh. 
Uh, are you asking about now like where we are right now uh, based on my testimony or just uh even before we get to, to, your, to your testimony yes uh, g- generally yeah uh, uh let me say that when we got married mm. first planning for any marriage is not a walk in the park because uh, when you look at the finances it's challenging me at that time when we were, we were planning for the wedding you know my dad who has also been exposed to the foreign countries yes he said in the west you can have a wedding of just 10 people mm. 10 people as long as the pastor is there you exchange your vows <laughs> yes. you're wedded some small drinks mm-hmm. but me i was coming with an african mentality <laughs> eh? mob psychology <laughs> where i wanted everybody to come to be invited <laughs> yes. uh, as jesus says in the parable go to the highways and the byways mm. call them and i was speaking also because my wife is a uh, is a woman of the people mm-hmm. she's very good with words so that was already a clash because i was i was estimating for three to five hundred people 300 to 500 people and my dad says no i'm not being practical then he said number two the thing that we, people will remember 20 years after you are married it is not the suit that you wore mm-hmm. it is whether they were satisfied whether they ate <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because if they some of them don't eat they will remind you many years ago we came to your wedding chakula <laughs> yeah yes so he was saying leave leave alone decorations and everything focus on the food yes yeah and looking back he was right he was right today nobody remembers which suit i wore yeah it is the food they remember yeah so yeah. A- people ate and they, they were full people ate mm. and people showed up including get crushers yeah those who didn't yeah. know even the bride and <laughs> ah they showed up <laughs> <laughs> they ate mm-hmm. yeah it, it was wonderful mm-hmm. yeah and let's take even on on on, on the dust part of your marriage and yeah. um even recently what you you guys uh, went through as a family yes just let us talk about this uh let me begin by saying that i'm a man helped by god mm-hmm. yeah it was uh last year in december the 10th it was on a sunday I was getting ready to go to church as my norm is. Mm-hmm. I was in the bedroom by then. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as I was dressing, as I was putting on my suit, yes. as I was just putting on my tie, I realized that uh, I had no coordination on the left side of my body, from the head to the toes. Me being left-handed, <clears throat> that is my dominant side. Yes so i was trying to touch my cheeks with my 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 left hand i could not imagine i could not touch my face i had no coordination totally so I, so I, you 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 were like a, your hand is not moving or it, it misses like if i want to touch the cheeks it it goes to the side uh-huh. yeah so i wondered now what is this then I started feeling dizzy. I thought maybe this is just a normal type of uh, dizziness or fatigue. <clears throat> but I, I had just woken up. So what I did, I told my, my wife, allow me to sit. Allow me even to sleep. I just need to lie down. I could not walk. I could not uh, coordinate mm. Yeah, my, my joints, everything. So what happened is that... Uh, they accepted they allowed me to sleep that was the day when there was a national blackout if you can remember last year december the 10th yes so i i slept from 10 in the morning to around 8 30. when it got to that time my mom who was there told me ah, this is not normal let's go to the hospital so my cousin came i entered the car they they had to carry me on both sides because i could not walk uh they put me to the car and we rushed to hospital 
when we rushed to the hospital uh, that was at mp Shah hospital when i just got there like this don't forget that there is a blackout in the nation yes yeah mm. when i got there when the nurses looked at me they rushed me quickly inside by that time they are, I, i'm just hearing them talk, talking that uh, this is like a stroke it's like a stroke yeah so they put me i went inside i i went uh, i underwent some tests i did uh, underwent a cat scan and uh, they checked me and and let me ask this time your, your wife was there my wife was there mm-hmm. my mother mm-hmm. yeah and my 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 cousins mm-hmm. were there yeah so by the time i arrived of course now they just put me on a stretcher rushed me in uh then they they, they scanned me a cat scan and uh, the doctors at that time told them kwanza before before that part of the doctor yeah when the nurses looked at me okay uh, they they asked me what was i doing in the house the whole day what was i, I told them i was just tired I, i told them i just wanted to rest not knowing that when you lie down in such a state you can easily slide into eternity mm. yeah and i slept from 10 in the morning to around 8 o'clock at night by the time i was getting to the hospital it was at 9 p.m so so let, let me ask yeah in all your life you've never had any health problem ne- no I, i've i've never been admitted anywhere mm. yeah I've never been admitted anywhere. So this was not something that was no recurring. It had never recurred. Mm. I've never even had anybody in our family who was the same uh, condition like a stroke. Yeah. And you know it is painless. Yes. Yeah. But it is dangerous. Yeah. So uh the doctors had to do some tests on me. Then they they told my my wife and my mother by morning the next day that was on monday i need to undergo a brain surgery what? because they found a, a blood clot on the right side of the, my brain behind my right ear and it was big what yeah it was a big clot it had to be removed or disintegrated mm-hmm. yeah so i was supposed to undergo a brain surgery yes because uh after i uh, i was just when i was just admitted yes after i did the mri and the cat scan determined that there was a blood clot that was big on the right side of my brain right behind my right ear so that was on sunday evening by the time my mom and my wife and my cousins were leaving hospital it was at 3 a.m. the doctor said the neurosurgeon at that time he said they must come back at 6 a.m. the following morning it was just 3 hours and they need to sign the documents so that <laughs> you know when you are told by a doctor to sign yes it's is 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 not a piece of cake so let me ask you how 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 are you feeling when you even received that news that you need to undergo brain brain surgery how were you calm or you no no, no uh, you, you see for me yes the doctor was not really in communication with communication with me okay it was with them uh-huh. yeah me i was just lying in the bed somewhere mm-hmm. but i'm not in pain yes no pain absolutely no headache or anything yeah so they were the, the ones who were receiving the information yeah mm-hmm. and uh so they left the hospital around 3 a.m. that sunday evening let me tell you they came back in the morning on monday so this is actually after service after church Yes, but so I, ne- I never made it to church. Yes. Cuz I I stayed home. Uh-huh. Me I slept. Uh-huh. Yeah, from 10 to 9 when I was getting to hospital mm-hmm. in the evening in a blackout. So you were supposed to go to church that Sunday. Yes. So I told my my my, my, my children, mm-hmm. you just go. So I just got a man Uber, they left. Mm-hmm. I remained at home with with my wife. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I never showed up in church yeah so uh 
when they le- when they left the hospital that night and came back in the morning when the neurosurgeon checked me again the clot that was visible had shrunk to a very tiny thing that he said now there is no need of operating me yeah i'm talking about a span of three hours something which was visible uh, through the ct scan and the mri shrunk and it was nearly not traceable in three hours so it was it was a shock to my family it was a shock to the even the neurosurgeon uh, surgeon himself it they said that it doesn't happen all, all the time but i I, wa- I want to say that uh just one verse if i can quote psalms chapter 140 verse 7 yes the bible says oh god the lord the strength of my salvation you have covered my head in the day of battle you have covered my head in the day of battle the lord ensured that uh, my head never underwent any surgery yeah in a span of three hours wow yeah and, and so w- actually when your wife and and your mom and your relatives actually when they went home they had a different report that you know what your husband uh you know needs to undergo yes. this surgery yes so even for them when they're coming in the morning uh, the next day actually they were coming because it was 3 a.m they left 3 a.m yes. in the morning yes so when they were coming they were expecting something actually they were prepared for for, for the surgery y- y- you can imagine the the tension in the atmosphere yeah them. yeah and were they able to communicate to the kids what you're going through or no no they they, they didn't uh-huh. yeah uh-huh. they had to make sure that uh, they remain calm yes yeah uh so uh the doctor at that time you know when i I entered like this i was in the icu i was admitted in the icu for around three days you admitted for uh, in icu i was admitted in icu when i just got like this they put pipes on my chest and everything drip everything whatever they do yeah so let me ask you because when 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 you and i you were in the icu yeah were you unconscious i was not unconscious i was talking i was talking even even the the doctor would ask me do you know where you are I told my no. Do you have any headache? I don't have any headache. I don't I had no pain absolutely. I was seeing my eyes were open everything. Yeah, it's just that I was in bed lying under with all the gadgets all over my body. Yeah. And so when all this was happening, uh how was your spirit? How were you uh because you say that you are you are awake all through yes were you having conversation with with god or with anyone also there in the in the, in the room uh, i'll put it this way yes i realized you know when the bible says in isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 seek the lord while he may be found that that in itself means that there's a, a time when the lord might not be found will not be found yes yeah mm-hmm. when you're okay as a believer the things and how you live your life when you are okay yes determine your state when you'll find yourself in trouble Mm -hmm. yeah the bible says in job chapter 14 verse 1 that man that is born of woman is a few days and those days are full of trouble so trouble comes to anybody but how we live our lives prior the trouble determines whether we will go through that trouble and how we go through that trouble mm-hmm. and how we'll come out of that trouble yes so what i realized mm-hmm. when when i was in bed my body was weak absolutely weak i could not walk but my spirit was intact my spirit was strong because i realized the word of god that i had put inside me for many years when i was okay mm-hmm. they are the ones that god used through his holy spirit to bail me out fast mentally fast mentally because hebrews chapter 11 says that people fast faint in the mind they give up in the mind yeah 
and when, when when you have given up in your mind your body follows suit yeah so the lord used the scriptures the holy scriptures to strengthen me from inside although my physical body was weak yeah yeah and that was my first level of overcoming yeah and were there people who were praying for you uh, be, uh, behind the scene even when they didn't tell you Amar? uh i had an army mm. i had an army from all over even people i've never met they were just sending messages and telling me we are praying for you our local church was praying for me my family was praying for me my children were praying for me everywhere Actually, when I stood before the church the first time, I told them that uh, I'm a product of prayers. I'm a product of prayers. Yeah. Because even when I was in the ICU, two people who, who were beside me in the other rooms never made it. They never made it. So, you know, that is a humbling moment because you ask yourself, why, why were you the one who survived? Yeah. Yeah. And then... I was in the ICU for three days. After those three days, I went straight to, to the ward. I never went through HDU. And then, in eight days, in eight days, I was out of hospital. Wow. <laughs> in eight days, you're out of the hospital? In eight days because i was admitted on the 10th mm -hmm. by the 18th yes i was discharged mm -hmm. the doctor by then told me first first i uh i had a physiotherapist mm -hmm. in the hospital yes because i had to regain my my movement the physiotherapist told me when you have a stroke if you do not go to hospital in under six hours you will need at least six months to recover before you walk six hours six months i slept from 10 a.m to 9 in the evening 11 hours mm -hmm. and then i walked in eight days i walked in eight days of which i would have needed six months yes that was a quick recovery a quick recovery even the the neurosurgeon the cardiologist uh, cardiologist and the rest are telling me now my life should be a case study because you know stroke takes people out yes yeah just like that so they say now this is not normal i told them it's the power of god it's the power of god the word of God was working from inside. Yeah. And the Lord healed me. I came out. I, I was wheeled out of, of, of the hospital mm -hmm. in a wheelchair. But as I told you, I walked. And on Sunday, mm -hmm. I was in church. On Sunday, you were in church? The 24th Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. And let me ask because I, I know there were people also there in the ward. Mm. What were they saying about your, your condition? Maybe uh, there are people also maybe they had because you mentioned that those who uh, passed when you're going through uh, when you're in the ICU. But when you're taken into the ward, were there people who had similar condition, or maybe how was your story, you know, and, and affecting them? Uh, uh, now, now you see, I I was not uh, privy to the. The things that were happening around me yeah number one i didn't even know that there are people who had passed next to me mm -hmm. it was after i was discharged and i was home mm -hmm. then my wife and my mother told, oh by the way <laughs> so and so passed he was next to you i never saw him because i was in my own room even in the world i was in my own room so it is you know there is a it's secluded yeah what what would happen at that time was just that uh when i needed uh, physiotherapy i would just be assisted along the corridor yeah by the physiotherapist mm -hmm. just uh, and it it was a challenge for me to walk because uh, my 
one thing that stroke does to to a person is that it makes you very tired yeah unusually tired actually it's called uh, chronic fatigue yes yeah so i'd book even just like uh five steps mm -hmm. and i feel as if uh a sack of potatoes has had been put on my on my chest mm. yeah like you mentioned there are people you are with in the in the same ward and yeah and they really passed you mm. know mm. and there are people who maybe they may be listening and um, they had patients in hospital in as much they trusted in god mm. but they never made it mm. and so they feel like as if god has kind of neglected them and kind of god has disappointed them mm. so what would you share as a word of encouragement to them or maybe what would you say to them Uh, thank you for having me yeah. uh, first uh, jesus said that uh, in the scriptures blessed are those who are not offended in me mm. yeah secondly job says that uh, though he slay me that is god yet will i trust him uh, part of our walk with god is faith because if 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 you if you read the word of god many of the apostles mm -hmm. who who served and walked with the lord yes they did not live rosy lives mm -hmm. actually most of them if not all of them mm -hmm. died uh, painful deaths mm -hmm. so the fact that uh, we, we are born again does not mean that we don't have challenges yeah. uh, peace is not the absence of trouble peace is simply the presence of god in the midst of trouble yeah so there are things that the reason why god is referred to as a sovereign god it has an aspect of meaning that god does not have to consult us with what happens in our lives mm -hmm. ours is just to, to trust him yeah so i just uh to tell the listeners here whatever we do let us not carry offense in our hearts towards God despite what happens to us somebody said that faith is the ability to hold on to God despite the changing circumstances of life wow it's the ability to hold on to God like a bulldog when it bites something it's better for it to leave its jaws there but it will not let go yeah mm -hmm. so faith is the ability to hold on to God despite the changing circumstances of life wow amazing yeah amazing and com coming back to, to to your testimony how has this now uh has this uh you know added something in your faith after going through this uh, transition very quick uh, when i came out from hospital i knew of a certain that uh, i'm living on borrowed time yeah so that that means that uh right now my life is uh uh is intentional mm. yeah mm -hmm. there's intentionality because i would have been taken out yeah were it not for god who was on my side yeah so i'm focused i'm more zealous for god more than i used to be yes amazing yeah. and uh, what about those people who now who are listening right now and they're trusting god for healing mm you know and maybe this issue like you mentioned yours was very quick but that these people who this has been a an issue for years maybe yes. they've been struggling with this issue for many years and uh they just ask god when will this healing ever happen i i hear you uh i'll just quote mark chapter 9 verse 23 mm. jesus said to the disciples uh to, to to one man who brought his son who was unwell jesus said unto him if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes if means it is conditional yeah if you if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed all things are possible the thing with god he does not give us a timeline of when our breakthrough will come yes when our healing will come mm -hmm. and that is still part of faith it is still the ability to hold on to god despite the changing circumstances of life yeah so somebody said can you trust him even though you can't trace him mm, that's the question that again. yeah can you trust him even though you can't trace him yeah that is the aspect of faith trusting god despite the inability to trace him 
Yeah. Yeah. Because usually when people go through challenges, God God seems distant. But the Bible says that he's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Yes. He is right there. Hidden in, in, in plain sight. Faith. Yeah. Let us just pray for that, uh, for those needs. But I'm going to hand it over to you, Rev. Mm-hmm. Even as you share the word that God is putting in your spirit, even as you get today to pray. And also for these ones who want to um, give their love to Jesus. Amen. Yes. Uh, let me begin by saying first that uh, the first sickness that the Lord wants to deal with tonight is the sickness of sin. Yes. The sickness of the soul. That is what is of more value than uh, physical healing or divine provision, anything. Mm. It is the internal one. And I, I, I just want to speak to our listeners that are soon are be leading you, those who do not know the Lord, into uh, prayer so that Christ may come into your heart yes. by faith. But I just wanted to read, uh, before I do that, uh, Psalms chapter 46 verse 1, the Bible says, Psalms 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The Bible emphasizes by saying he's a very present help. One of the names of God is that he is Jehovah Shammah, the, the one that is there, the one that is present. And in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15, the Bible says, as I, Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15, thus, for thus says the Lord, in returning and rest shall you be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Mm. Many times when people are, are, are faced with challenges, the first thing that we do is panic. We panic quickly. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 25, the Bible says, Do not be afraid of sudden fear. You know that fear that grips you like this until you, you become like, like a zombie. Yes. That is dangerous. But the Bible says we must come to that place of quietness and confidence for therein lies our strength because God is a present help in time of need. Yes. So right now, I just want to speak to the listeners who are there. You are lost. Maybe you had been even born again, but you backslid. The cares of life have taken you. And right now, you are there listening to the sound of my voice. You're saying that you want to come back to the Lord. I just want you... In the quietness of your heart, focused on the Lord, the Savior and the Bishop of your soul, the Bible says. If you can just, uh, I'll lead you as I, as I pray that you can say these words behind me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I realize that I'm in need of a Savior. Tonight I have heard your word. I ask you, Lord that he may come into my heart wash me from all filthiness and cleanse me from my sin tonight i accept you as my lord and savior receive me and strengthen me by your holy spirit to walk with you the rest of my days in the name of jesus christ we have believed and prayed amen 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 so so uh and Rev, uh, maybe you can just even pray for uh, for for these needs that have just been presented before uh, the throne tonight. Amen. Yeah. I, I just uh, briefly I just want to pray. Yes. Uh, I just begin by saying that God is able. Mm. Ephesians three verse twenty. The Bible says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Yes. So let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We worship you this evening. We realize that in you we live and we move and we have our being. We realize that without you you can do nothing. Lord, I commit my listeners before the throne of grace. I pray even for that listener who is asking you for restoration. I pray that Lord you shall restore that which the uh, the canker home, the palmer home have eaten. Restore back the lost years in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for my listener, O God Almighty who is uh, falsely accused and is feeling heavy laden. 
Father, may you intervene in this situation. We pray for justice in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For uh, him who has a heavy burden, I pray the Lord God Almighty, the Lord you shall intervene and strengthen them, O God, to go through this thing. Strengthen them, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, for the listener, O God Almighty, who is even believing you, O God, from deliverance, from the works of the flesh, I pray that you may cause that listener to go deeper in you. For the deeper they go in you, the more these things will begin to fall off by the power of your holy spirit i thank you lord god almighty even for the one who is believing you for breakthrough oh god you are the god of breakthrough i pray for divine in intervention oh god in that situation that they are believing in for a breakthrough be it the family be it the marriage whatever it is oh god may you provide oh god by your holy spirit oh god may you supply oh god breakthrough in the mighty name of jesus christ i come uh, even lift up before your throne of grace oh god the ones that are sick oh god lord you are able to do Lord, you're able to do. You are Jehovah Sh uh, Rapha. You are Jehovah Rofeka, the one who heals us, O oh God. And we send forth your word of healing wherever they are right now, O oh Lord God. Your words are spirit and their life. Therefore, we send forth spirit and life uh, through the airwaves right now, even to their homes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I thank you, O oh God, for the listener who is believing you for the healing of the eyes, O oh Lord. Uh, I speak divine healing upon uh, that listener. I rebuke every spirit of blindness uh, every challenge in the eyes uh, whether it is cataracts or anything i speak divine healing be made whole in the mighty name of jesus christ uh, i thank you lord god almighty that even the depressed and the discouraged uh, are receiving encouragement tonight uh, because lord you are able and you are available you are present uh, we give you back the worship and the honor for that which you have done your word says oh lord god almighty that lord you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above and we we believe you, O oh God. We trust you with our very own lives because you're faithful. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have believed. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Wow. Thank you so much, Rev. Uh, thank you so much for, for that prayer. Rev, yes, uh, those people are listening and uh, they really want to know how can they get in touch with you? Some of you want to call you for ministry. They want to come and visit their church and to come and be a blessing. And uh, so how can they get in touch with you? Uh, on Facebook, you can find me. Uh, my, my, my name, there's just Alan Rono. Mm. A-double-L. Rono. You'll find me there. And uh, that's usually basically where I am. But uh, my... If, if you want my phone number <laughs> yes i don't know uh my safaricom uh, number is zero seven two one four zero seven four seven four zero seven two one four zero seven four seven four uh i'm based in gospel tabernacle worship center south b uh you're welcome to fellowship with us we have services every day very few churches in the city have services every day every day every day amazing monday to friday mm. morning glory lunch hour in the afternoon and uh, evenings mm -hmm. yeah then on sundays we are there uh, our first service starts at 8 to 9 30 then from 9 30 to 10 30 is our uh, bible study session then from 10 30 to 1 30 is our second service then in the evening we have an evening service from four to six yes uh, uh because south b can be very big where, where is the church we relocated are, we are on mchumbi road right uh at the shopping center on mchumbi, mchumbi road you'll just see a big church there mm -hmm. gospel tabernacle mm -hmm. you can't get lost amazing uh directly opposite vomira house yes so, so, thank you so much 96.9 fm pearl radio